Hello, I am under the bus. I'm gonna be installing some water tanks down here. Um, if you're finding this video, chances are you've also probably found vonslat.com. Um, that was probably the best mounting system I've seen for water, water tanks under a bus. I can't do that system because my bus ribs are very different from what that guy has. Um, he has a lot of ribs that are like this. You can see it's got a lip um, and they, or I-beams underneath his bus. I do not, I have these smooth bent pieces of metal holding up my, my ceiling. So I had to come up with something a little bit different. Working with what I had, I got some of this uh, conduit mounting metal stuff. The idea is that, you know, you put this up against a wall or something and then you have these little, there's all kinds of different types of hardware you can put in these slats. I'm going to be using some of the threaded steel dowels to uh, hold up the tanks. So this first beam is really just kind of an experiment. Uh, I was putting it in to see if this system would work and I had a lot of problems. I learned a few things. For starters, this uh, hardware that I got for the for this beam um, was incorrect. This is what I got to start with. Um, this bolt is 5 eighths or th uh, 3 eighths inch wide, one and a half inch long hex head. This one is made for wood, for use with wood. The threads are very wide um, and that's to help it grip st uh, softer things like soft wood. And then down here at the head you can see there's a lot of space between where the thread ends and the head of the bolt. Um, so that doesn't really help for uh, applying thin things like sheet metal. So I went to Tacoma Screw and got this one which is just about all the same dimensions but it's got a kind of flat washer head and the threads are really thin, uh, really close together and they're meant to cut into the, the sheet metal a lot better and just grip it. And uh, it's like night and day. They This works way better than this guy. So make sure you get the right hardware. And then this is essentially what I'm doing. So I've got the washer, the hardware, and this little grippy washer to make sure it doesn't back out once it's uh, once it's all the way screwed in there. So then that will just go goes into these holes like this. And then this up into my beams. So I got a little creative with my clamps. I've got these C clamps, super cheapo C clamps. Again, since there's nothing to really clamp onto down here, I just have it uh, clipping to the next beam and then using the, the clip slide to just rest it on there. And so now I'm going to take my marker, mark the holes just in case it comes undone and then uh, use the drill and just drill a line of bolt holes. So I've drilled all of my holes in here and I put one in, this thing's not even doing anything. This is actually being held on pretty well just on its own. But I'm gonna go ahead and put six more of these bolts into these holes. And that's what's going to hold this rack to the bus. It's labor intensive. There we go. Let's take the clips off. I'd be willing to bet that those two bolts by themselves would probably hold up the tank just fine. But I'm going overkill because, again, this is one of those things that I don't ever want to have to deal with ever again. It's an Michelangelo. 
Michelangelo. Yeah. This is my my ceiling masterpiece. <laughs> it's under the floor. It's like a basement masterpiece. I'm also pushing up while I'm twisting to be sure that the threads don't get screwed up or back out or anything like that. I want it just to drive in and never drive out. When all said and done, I'm going to drive 30 bolts under the floor. And if we're going by Von Slat math, the other guy that I mentioned earlier, I've got a 75 gallon tank that should be able to fit here in each of these struts should only have to hold roughly 65 pounds for like just this one section that, that it's supporting 65 pounds worth of water and uh, each of these struts are held up by six bolts so that's just about 10 pounds per bolt I've already got three in here and I can lift myself up on it and it doesn't budge at all. So this should be perfectly solid for my application. These threaded rods are 20 inches long and they each uh, go into a, a little nut that is made to go into this conduit. Um, and then there's a washer and another nut that it, cinches it all together so this thing doesn't unscrew over time. Okay, so you screw on all of your components like this on the end of your rod. And then we come over here to the conduit. You put it up here in the rod. Like that. And you twist sideways and bam! Fits right there on the, uh, on the rail. And it's a matter of twisting it up. sits there. So already you can see that the, the threaded rod is, is pretty rigid, holds itself in there. But to add to that, just screw this up a little bit more, kind of make it straight, nice and tight. Then I grab my robo grip. Just give it a couple of twists. There we go. And that's not going anywhere. All right, I'm hanging out underneath the tank, which is just sitting on my lawn furniture right now. And from my perspective looking up, you can see the threads coming down from the mounts. And if I push it all the way up, I've got some clearance here. Just about two inches. Marked a spot where the uh, the vent is gonna go and drilled it. You can see that's this that two by four there is a support beam for the wall inside, but it's not actually doing anything. It's just uh, kind of a marker. So that's a pretty good measurement right there. That's a great place to come up through the floor. So I'm pretty happy about that right now. I'm just gonna keep cutting, make room for my vent pipe. All right, this is a piece of an old bed frame, which is a good source of cheap or free metal. Um, it's what's going to hold up the tank underneath. So I'm cutting a couple of 25 foot, 25 inch pieces that are going to be used for the underside. All right, I cut the bottom support that's going to go underneath the tank. That's just one of five that I'll need for this particular tank. I'm going to spray it with uh, some truck bed liner to make sure that it is not going to rust or fail. It took some wrestling, but uh, I was able to get the tank in there. It's being held up just by one strut. One of the things that I really like about using these super struts is that Making adjustments for width or position is very easy because I got a rail that I can use. If I did this again, I'd probably have made those even a little bit longer just so I had a little bit more to play with. 
basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking 26 inch wide cut pieces of bed frame and I am measuring those lines are each 22 inches and then I'm drawing a circle right where the uh, right where the half inch hole needs to go and I'm using my washer as a template to make sure there's enough of an edge that when I put the washer underneath it'll be able to fit all the way flush with the metal. When I'm done with that then I hang them up and I spray them with the truck bed liner and uh, then they're ready to be put on the tank. Figured now is a good time to install my dump valve for my gray water tank. Uh, it's three inch ABS fitting, but the tank itself has a threaded fitting so this guy will need to be glued in there. To do that, I have some all-purpose glue right here. This is for joining uh, materials that are not alike to each other. This is polyethylene and this is ABS, so in order to glue them together I needed an all-purpose glue. For the rest of the setup I have just normal uh, ABS glue. But I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on this thread pop this adapter in and then continue my ABS assembly from there. All right, the glue, the all-purpose glue that I used set incredibly fast. Um, so I was like racing to try to get it in there as far as possible before it couldn't move anymore, which it can't. Um, so it is, it's in there. Um, one thing you might want to know is that uh, the rules, at least in Washington State, for if you want to register your your bus as an RV, you can't have they'll they'll check this during the inspection, but you can't have anything hanging lower than the lowest part of the rear differential on the bus, which I don't even know if you can see back there. It's 10 inches high, uh, and so I was worried about this. Like I wanted to make sure I got in as much, as far as possible, but this is 11 inches, 11 inches high, so. I'm good, but um, yeah. Um, as you can see, the other parts of this are just roughed in. I have another piece of ABS that I'm gonna use the ABS glue on the adapter and then inside here, and I'll set that and that will be my valve. All right, I'm holding my ABS together. Just use this black glue, which looks like this. So there's a piece of ABS in the middle there, three inch, to join these two hubs together. 75 gallon tank, gray water, installed. You can see the uh, two inch pipe, which is gonna be the inlet for all the drains. And then if we go around inside, we can see the vent right there has not been attached it's just dry fit in there right now all right I've started gluing together the vent for the tank the gray water tank it's coming up it's gonna snake around that little board right there and then come straight up out this is the vent pipe for the gray water tank okay I've run my gray water vent up through the roof I'm just going to put some sealant around the outside of this, then take this cap, it will sit up on top, screw it in, and again, make sure that the sealant is all around so that it doesn't uh, leak. All right, and there you have it. Vent is installed. Now we've got the gray water tank in, the vent is installed, and now it's time to start plumbing the rest of the tank so that the drains actually go to the gray water tank. A lot of progress today. Good job, me.